Hi guys, Johnny here from facebook.com slash minicamblog, at minicamblog on Twitter as well as Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Today I'm looking at Dogcam Sport's new Roadhawk Ride, which is a waterproof 720p HD bullet camera designed specifically with cyclists, motorbike riders and horse riders in mind. The recent BBC documentary entitled The War on Britain's Roads highlighted the ever-increasing need to wear a helmet camera to protect yourself whilst out on the road. If you witness or are involved in an act of road rage, bad overtaking or worst case scenario an accident, the Roadhawk ride will supply crucial video evidence if details of what happened need to be verified. Ok so the camera is waterproof up to 10 metres in depth so it will survive commutes in the pouring rain with no problems. There's an 8GB class 4 micro SD card included which records the 720p footage with ease. The camera records in 5 minute video segments and the loop mode engages when space on the memory card runs out, recording over the earliest clips first. The most important aspect is the time and date stamping. Each video clip has the date and time on it, which will be very useful if the video clips have to be used to verify any incident details. As you can see in the photo, the camera features just one button. Press and hold it to start recording and again to stop recording. It's a very simple camera to use. There's quite a diverse range of mounts included, so no matter what style of helmet you use, there won't be a problem with mounting the camera. There's a built-in rechargeable 90 minute battery. The included cables can be used to supply external power, so you can hardwire the camera to your motorbike's battery. When external power is supplied, the camera starts recording automatically. More features worth noting include the fact that the camera records at 30 frames per second, it has a very wide angle lens, it supports up to a 32GB micro SD card, it's good in low light as we'll see a bit later, an LED lets you know it's recording and or charging, the video clips can be played back on both PCs and Macs and the camera itself is very small and lightweight as we'll see shortly. Here's a list of contents which we'll get to in a minute but it goes to show you really do get a lot for your money. Ok let's get into the unboxing, the top of the box slides off like so, inside you'll find a large Roadhawk sticker, then you'll neatly present it with the camera itself as well as the accessories box. After removing both, the camera pops out of the hard protective foam like so. As you can see you've got the single button on top, then the lens, and then the rear cap that unscrews. The waterproof cap is installed by default, this can be changed for the non-waterproof cap to get better sound. Both caps have a quarter inch tripod thread inside them. This means that you can mount the camera to a suction or clamp base mount if you need to. Unscrewing the rear cap reveals the camera's memory card slot as well as the USB port. The rubber o-ring you can see seals the camera. There are two spare o-rings included. As mentioned the camera is incredibly small at only 8.5cm long. It's also very lightweight so when it's installed on your helmet you can't tell it's there letting you concentrate on your riding. Ok here's everything else that you get included with the camera. Not pictured is the user manual but this is included with every Roadhawk ride camera. The 8GB class 4 micro SD card with adapter so you can plug it into a card reader or your laptop if need be. The two main self adhesive mount bases, one flat and one curved. These can be used on your helmet or on a different surface as long as it's not slippery. Here's a different angle showing where the mounts clip into place and the two main mounts themselves. The mount on the right is basic and lets you rotate the camera to get a good angle. The mount on the left is a little more advanced, allowing you to clip and unclip the camera faster. It also lets you rotate the camera 360 degrees and there's also a slight amount of tilt available, giving you lots of mounting flexibility. This is what the mounts look like when they're clipped in. Ok let's look at the other included mounts. This one uses a thick rubber tether to attach itself to your helmet. This is a simple self adhesive mount that uses two pieces of elastic to hold the camera in place. This is a head strap mount. The part on the right goes around your head like a sweatband and the part on the left wraps around and holds the camera in place using two pieces of elastic. It's actually quite comfortable so you can use this if you don't want to mount the camera directly to your helmet. The part on the left can be used as a goggle mount. Just wrap it around the goggles elastic. Two self adhesive velcro strips and plenty of spare double sided 3M sticky pads. This is the non-waterproof rear cap. Use this to get better sounds on days when it's not likely to rain. And there's the two spare rubber o-rings. On to cables now. This is the USB cable. You can use it to transfer video clips from the camera onto your computer. It's also used for charging the camera using your computer's USB port. 
These are additional power and extension cables. Use the two on the left if the included USB cable isn't long enough. Use the three on the right to hardwire the camera to your motorbike. Also included are a few tips to get the most out of the camera. Okay, there's three things you need to do to get started. Firstly, insert the micro SD card. Use your fingernail or a pen to make sure it clicks into place. Secondly, turn the camera on for the first time to format the memory card. Press and hold the button. The green LED will light up and the blue LED will start flashing. This means that the card is now formatted and the camera is recording. This is what the LEDs do each time you start recording. After a second or two, turn the camera off by pressing and holding the button again. Now we need to make sure the date and time is correct on the camera. This is ever so slightly technical, but if you follow the instructions it's quite easy to do. You'll need a Windows PC or a Mac running Windows via Boot Camp to do this. First of all, plug the camera into your computer. The red LED remains on if the battery is charging. When fully charged it turns off and the green LED is visible. The green LED also simply indicates that the camera is connected to your computer. Out of the box the camera should be fully charged, so the red LED should only be on for a couple of seconds. Open up Notepad from the Start menu. Now we're going to enter the date and time. You're typing in everything as it's displayed on the video clips. So the year, month and day, followed by the hour, minutes and seconds. I'd suggest typing the time a few minutes ahead to give you some leeway to save the file, copy it onto the memory card, disconnect the camera and power the camera on again. So it was about 11.27 when I was doing this, so I set the time to 11.30. After you've finished typing, you need to save the file as time.txt using capitals. Save it somewhere so that it's easy to get to. Now just copy the file using Ctrl C, open up the memory card under Removable Storage. You will most likely have a folder on your memory card already. Simply paste the time.txt file onto the root of the memory card. Do this by using Ctrl and V. After the time.txt file is on the card, you can eject it from Windows and unplug the camera. Now, when you next turn on the camera, make sure you've waited until the time you wrote in the file. So I waited until 11.30 to turn the camera on to get accurate time. Right, that's all the tricky bits finished. Now you just have to mount the camera to your helmet or somewhere else that you'd like to put the camera. For this, I'm using my bicycle helmet. Due to the style of my helmet, I'm using the curved self-adhesive base to get the best adhesion possible. It's a simple case of removing the cover from the 3M sticky pad and sticking the mount down. Make sure you stick the base somewhere central along the side of your helmet. This will help you get the best camera angle. I used the standard non-rotating mount as it seems to work fine for me. I left the rear waterproof cap off to get the camera as level as possible. The memory card slot acts as a great level aid. When you're happy with the camera's angle, simply screw the cap back on. Now you're ready to head out onto the road. Remember, all you need to do is press and hold the button and the green LED will light up and then the blue LED will start flashing when the camera is recording. I wanted to get some test footage for this review, so the next day I went for a ride with the waterproof rear cap on the camera to see what the sound was like. The video quality is good considering the price point, the size of the camera as well as the fact that it's recording date and time at 720p HD resolution. A number of cars overtook me. They did nothing wrong but you can clearly see their number plates. This will be useful if anything did happen. With the waterproof cap on you can't really hear an awful lot. It's not surprising really as the camera is effectively watertight. As it wasn't raining I swapped the rear cap for the non-waterproof version. As you can hear there is a noticeable difference.
so I would highly recommend just using the non-waterproof rear cap unless you know it's going to be a wet day. This really is the ideal camera for recording your commute or leisure activities on two wheels, three wheels or four legs. If anything does happen, you'll have all the video evidence you need. I then decided to mount the camera inside my car using the rear cap's quarter inch tripod thread. Now for this I used a standard suction mount which you can also buy from Dogham Sport. There's a link in the video description. That's my Roadhawk DC1 that I've had for quite some time now and it's been absolutely fantastic for recording all sorts of clips out on the road. Again, there's a link in the video description if you're interested in getting one. For this test I took the DC1 down, installed the suction mount and then attached the Roadhawk ride. It was trickier to mount the camera level as you can't see the memory card slot like you did before. So I just had to do my best. I was using the non-waterproof rear cap. Ok, here I am driving through my local town. Again the footage is very clear and you've got the date and time in the bottom right hand corner. The camera angle is a bit wonky but you can see everything that's happening. I went back out later in the day when the lights had almost all gone and as you can see the camera performs well in these conditions. If this was on the side of your helmet you'd be able to see enough to supply any evidence if an incident did occur. But in general I don't recommend using this as I have in your car. Use it as it was intended for as a helmet camera or a camera for your motorbike. Mainly because the mounting solutions are so much better for use on helmets and motorbikes and you don't have to have a suction mount constantly stuck to your windscreen. You can hardwire the camera to your motorbike and you can also get the camera level correct on your helmet or motorbike to obtain better footage. The video clips from the Roadhawk ride can be viewed in Windows Media Player or if, like me, you use a Mac, you can use VLC Player. Details for downloading VLC Player are included with the camera. So to conclude, the Roadhawk ride is the camera to get if you're looking for a cost effective, lightweight means of recording your daily commute or leisure time just in case anything happens whilst out on the road. That's about it for this video. Don't forget to visit facebook.com slash minicamblog and give it a like. Follow at minicamblog on Twitter as well as Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.